As we walk down memory lane, we'll remember the contributions of our founding principal, Father Thomas Moen, the Congregation of St. Basil, the Bazillion Fathers, the religious priests and nuns, the parents, principals, teaching and non-teaching staff, and last and not least, the students from 1974 to 2014. We thank God for all of your gifts and contributions that you and they have all made in these 40 years. I will now call upon the students who will carry the 40 bricks to come forward. Nineteen seventy four, nineteen seventy five, nineteen seventy six, nineteen seventy seven, nineteen seventy eight, nineteen seventy nine, nineteen eighty, nineteen eighty one, nineteen eighty two, nineteen eighty three, nineteen eighty four, nineteen eighty five, nineteen eighty six, nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty eight, nineteen eighty nine. 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993, 1994, 1995, 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999, 2000, 2001, We'll pause as we assemble our history. Two thousand and two, two thousand and three, two thousand and four, two thousand and five, two thousand and six, two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen. And now, 2014. And as our students build our history, I would like to note that the colors of the brick and the numbers represent our school crest, and also the color ruby, the color of our 40th anniversary. And we have a special thank you as well to Ms. Kovacs and her students who made each brick. We also have the words of faith, hope, and charity embedded in the frame, and these virtues of the Toronto Catholic School Board's three-year pastoral plan have not only helped our community face many challenges in the past 40 years, but have really guided us on our spiritual journey. So for our students and everyone who helped, we'll have a round of applause before we move forward.
Today, we are blessed to have His Eminence, Cardinal Thomas Collins, with us to celebrate this anniversary Mass. I will now ask everyone to please stand to greet our main celebrant. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. We come to, together today to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on this 40th anniversary of the school. It's a time for us to look back and thank God for his blessings upon all who have been a part of this uh, community of faith and of Catholic education. And we give thanks for all who have served here, for all of the Brazilian fathers, for uh, the religious lay people uh, and teachers of all the different teachers and parents and administrators and the whole community uh, of people who have made this school such a great school. 
So we offer this Mass in thanksgiving for them and to pray that each one of us, day by day, will be faithful to the heritage we've received and to be able to go forward and serve the Lord faithfully. And so as we begin this uh, Holy Eucharist, we call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries of our faith. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, in you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so too we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul's escort took him as far as Athens and went back with instructions for Silas and Timothy to rejoin Paul as soon as they could. So Paul stood before the whole council of the Areopagus and made the speech. Men of Athens, I have seen for myself how extremely scrupulous you are in all religious matters. Because as I strolled round looking at your sacred monuments, I noticed among other things an altar inscribed to an unknown God. In fact, the unknown God you revere is the one I proclaim to you. Since the God who made the world and everything in it is himself, Lord of heaven and earth, he does not make his home in shrines made by human hands. Nor is he in need of anything that he should be served by human hands. On the contrary, it is he who gives everything, including life and breath to everyone. From one single principle, he not only created the whole human race so that they could occupy the entire earth, but he decreed the times and limits of their habitation. And he did this so that they might seek the deity and by feeling their way towards him, succeed in finding him. And indeed, he is not far from any of us. Since it is in him that we live and move and exist, as indeed some of our own writers have said, we are all his children. Since we are the children of God, we have no excuse for thinking that the deity looks not like not anything in gold, silver, or stone that has been car carved and designed by a man. But now, overlooking the times of ignorance, God is telling everyone everywhere that they must repent. Because he has fixed a day when the whole world will be judged in uprightness by a man he has appointed. And God has publicly proved this by raising him from the dead. At this mention of rising from the dead, some of them burst out laughing. Others said, we would like to hear you talk about this another time. After that, Paul left them, but there were some, of, some who attached themselves to him and became believers. Among them, Dionysus, the Aeropagite, and a woman called Damaris, and others. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The response is, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Response, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Let the kings of the earth and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too and maidens, old men and boys. Response, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Response, heaven and earth are full of your glory. He has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones. 
from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Response? Please stand for the gospel acclamation. so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all the truth. He will not speak on his own, but he'll speak what he hears and he will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you, that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. person travels and uh, goes across a border, that person very often is asked the two questions, which are the most important ones in life. You come up to the immigration desk, the person standing there, and they ask you, who are you? And they ask you, where are you going? And that's what life is all about. We need to know how to answer those questions. Who are you? Where are you going? Sometimes we don't know the answer to the first question. We can get very confused about that. We don't know who we are. We are. We can be worried about it, weighed down with care and concern. We need to know that. Who am I? Am I just simply a, a thing, the same with other people, just an object in this world? Or am I someone who loves and is lovable? So that is the answer to the question. Each one of us is a child of God who is truly loved and needs to love other people. And where are we going? You know, we can find all kinds of answers for that. We wander around this world and it can get very confusing. We can be in a desert that just has no pathways. And yet, we need to know that because there's an old saying, if you know where you're going, you're more likely to get there. Somebody once said that Columbus didn't just sail, he sailed west. There has to be a certain direction. It's true enough in uh, anything in life. We need to know where we're going. In the reading today, in the first reading, St. Paul was at a place in Athens where people didn't know very much about those two questions. It was a place sort of like this, a big stand in the middle of the city where people debated all kinds of things. And to the question, who are you, 
often the answer was, well, you're just a slave. You're just a thing to be used, to be bought and sold. Or you're just simply someone who has no purpose. And St. Paul said, no, even your own poets say, you are children of God. Each one of us is a child of God. Each one of us is a who, not a what. This is the basics of holy grammar. You've got to know the difference between a who and a what. We need to love people and use things instead of using people and loving things. Each one of us is not just a what, just an object. Who are you? Each one of us is a child of God. And therefore, we need to be treated reverently, every one of us, never used as a way to get ahead, never used or never mocked or treated with contempt or disposed of as something unimportant. Every one of us is a child of God. That's who we are. That's the heart of it all. And in the Gospel of Matthew, near the end, our Lord speaks of the way in which when I was in prison, did you visit me? When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me to drink? Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. And so in our faith as well, we need to look at the face of each person and see the face of Christ. No less than that. We think of the great saints who have done this. People who have treated others not as objects to be used, disposed of. I haven't used all my friends yet. No, none of that but as people to be treated with reverence and respect, to be loved as a child of God in whom we see each one of us the face of Christ. That's why we can't just ignore people. If somebody's going through struggles, do we even notice it? Do you ever read the face of another person and see the care they've got? Who knows what's happening at home? Who knows what they're facing day by day in school? How often can we take people and just treat them like things? just off to the side. We can never do that. That's not right. Who am I? I'm a child of God. And that's true of every other person. So we must never treat a person with contempt. But always love them, care for them, listen to them, never use them, but listen to them with reverence. And if every one of us did that, what a better place this world would be. And where are we going? Well, you know, that's what school is about. We need to learn about that, think about that. Sometimes it's just to get success in the world, and fair enough. But I think that one of the ways in which we answer the question, where are we going, is to look at the, the end of life. Our life must be something that is lived with a purpose. Our life is not just like a tube of toothpaste that keeps on going until there's no more left. Then you throw it away. Our life is like an arrow shooting towards a target. And so in order to know how to shoot the arrow, we've got to know where the target is. We've got to think of the big questions. What's the purpose of life? Why are we here? Is there anything more than just simply going year after year until it's all over? Or what is it? Is the purpose of life simply to pile up fame or success or health or wealth or all those? Because there comes a time to each one of us to those who are older, it's going to come a lot closer probably than those who are younger, but you never know when tick, 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 time's up. And this brief journey through earth is over. And we're going to be at the end of our life, and all the things we think we gather together are going to be nothing, just dust. All we have when we finally come to the end of our life is the love we've given away, not the things we've put think we cling to and grab at. Our health is going to be a little irrelevant then. Our wealth is unimportant. What's going to be matter, what's going to matter at that time is the love we've shown to other people, the way we've treated others as people, not objects, as a who and not a what. So those two questions actually come together. When it's a matter of where are we going, we're going to a point where we have to look back in our life and ask the first question, who are we? Who are other people? Have I treated them with respect and love? That's the purpose of our life in Christ. That's why we seek to be what God wants us to be and to see the face of Christ in others. And that's also why we have Father Henry Carr School and all the other Catholic schools. I know this school is a fine and excellent school where you can learn all the things you need to learn to get ahead in life. 
But this school, like every Catholic school, has to be one that asks, who are you? And where are you going? And not just to get a job and this or that. What's the deeper purpose of life? That's what Catholic education is all about. Because there's no point in rushing quickly down the highway if you don't know where you're going. We've got to have those deep questions in mind. And that's why this school and every Catholic school needs to be rooted in the deep questions, which are ultimately the most important ones in life. Who are you? A child of God. To be loved and treated with respect. Every single person. To be noticed. Not to be ignored. Attention must be paid to each person, never a person dismissed or ignored, but treated with love as a child of God. And if we do that, then we will find the purpose of our life. And we will know, indeed, the great questions which are at the heart of life and at the heart of Catholic education. So I pray the Lord to bless each one who is here as part of this community of education which is, I'm sure, very fine in terms of all the things that schools are meant to teach. That's good. You've got to do that, because we've got to study and work hard, because we do it for the Lord. We do it with a purpose in mind. But ultimately, the purpose of this school and of every Catholic school is to go for the deeper questions, not just the surface ones. The ones that tell us why we are where we are. Who are we? What's the direction of our life? We're not just drifting along, we have a purpose. And ultimately, at the end of our life, which will come who knows when, two seconds, 50 years, 30 days, we don't know that. It's just, then when we come to the end of our life, we'll get two other questions, which are the only ones that matter. And I always like telling students, all your exams don't matter. Um, you can take it from the Cardinal and Trump. No, they don't matter. The only exam that matters is at the end of life, when those two questions of who are you and where are you going end up in this one. When the Lord says, have you loved the Lord your God with a heart and mind and soul? And have you loved your neighbor as yourself? It's really the same thing, just expressed in a different way. That's the final exam. You can't cram for it. Not a good idea to cram for any exam, but you can't cram for this one. It's a lifetime preparing for that. But we begin it early on, and we do it through life, and our Catholic system of education, schools like Father Henry Carr are intended to help us to answer the deep questions of life. The others will take care of themselves. So I pray the Lord to bless everyone here that we will have the wisdom and understanding to know what, is matter, what matters in life, to be able to answer the questions that matter most. Who are you and where are you going as we come on our way to be with ultimately our Heavenly Father? So now we offer our prayers to Almighty God. The response to the prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church turning to Jesus in difficult times, be peace to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders battling against poverty and injustice, be peace to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who live on the margins of society, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the girls who are kidnapped in Nigeria, that God will bring them out in his own mercy. He will see that they are brought out safely and without harm. Lord, hear prayer. For the community of Father Henry Carr, past, present, and future, and that they may be true to the school's model, Domini of Vidium, Lord, that I must see, and in the seeing, know the love of God, we pray to the Lord responds. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in the year of hope, we might understand that hope is not wishful thinking, but our souls anchored in God, we pray to the Lord response. Lord, Lord, for the ill and all who suffer physical, emotional, or mental pain, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For 
for those who have died and for those who are grieving loss, especially Ms. Carly's father-in-law, Mr. Anthony's brother, Mr. Nick Zambri's mother. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, 
Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. <coughs> look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <coughs> may he make us an, an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph his spouse, with your blessed apostles and royal martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, our Bishop Thomas here present, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all our pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As we prepare for communion, those students who are in communion with the Catholic Church may come forward to receive communion. Those students who wish to get a blessing from His Eminence Cardinal Collins, the priest or the Eucharistic ministers may do so with their hands across their shoulders. We have several stations for communion. The ministers of hospitality will lead you to those stations. This is a really sacred moment where we receive the body of Christ, the real presence of Jesus. And therefore, we ask for silence and reflective prayer.
Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to the end of the celebration of the Eucharist, uh, it calls to mind the time a couple of years ago when I was in high school. Well, maybe a few more than a couple of years ago. And I remember one of my teachers, uh, Father John Newstead, who was my English teacher, he got me interested in English literature, but also in the priesthood. And uh, he was a very faithful man. And uh, like the great priests who have served here at Father Henry Carr uh, School, and uh, he said to me once when I was in grade 11, you know, Tom, you should think about becoming a priest. So I thought about it, and many years later, I went in and responded to the call. And so I really encourage everyone here, I don't know how many of you, but there'll be quite a few, I think, who might have a vocation to be perhaps a religious sister, uh, perhaps a priest in a religious order, like the Bazillion uh, congregation, which has so faithfully served this school and is at the, the heart and foundation of the school, or perhaps a diocesan priest like myself, uh, and um, that just step forward, think about it, respond to the call, uh, you'll never regret it. Uh, Many years ago, Jesus said, you know, come follow me. And then people step forward. So I ask you to think about that, pray for that, pray that those amongst us who may have a particular call of service for the whole church 
we'll do that. Then give me a call, 416-934-0606. Or since you're all much more technologically adept than I am, Archbishop at archtoronto.org. But uh, we'll leave it for that. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you and remain with you always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Um, a big thank you to our gospel choir who worked with Ms. Tremolidi and did a fabulous job. Another big thank you to Mr. Malik and the AV crew. And, and also um, to the 40th anniversary committee, former and present teachers, support staff, principals, our students, and all of today's special guests. Thank you. Now, at this time, at this time, we have a series of special thanks and congratulations to give. And we're going to start with, um, everyone will be seated for a few minutes still, and we're going to start by thanking and appreciating our principals. So today in our midst, uh, there we go, today in our midst we have many principals who have made very significant contributions to this school community over the last 40 years. We wish to acknowledge their contributions and efforts that have helped to shape 
our school. We want to say a big thank you, so I'm going to call upon Mr. Ugo Rossi, our principal, who will hand out plaques to several very special principals. And I will call up the following principals to receive their plaques, and we will hold our applause until the end. We'll start with Mr. Joseph Brisbois, who served our school from 1988 until 1996. We would also like to thank Mr. Rod Simmons, who served our school from 1996 until 1999. Mr. Renford Bailey, who served our school from 1999 till 2004. Mr. Vincent Bersada who served our school from 2004 to 2013. Until 2005, I, uh, thank you for that correction. And Mr. Michael Rossetti, who served our school from 2006 until 2013. And I'm going to ask all of the principals to stand next to our 40th monument. And I'm going to ask the principals to stay on stage, actually, as we call upon our next distinguished guest. Now, I would ask everyone to please remain quiet as momentarily we will be recognizing many teachers who have truly been pillars of our Father Henry Carr community. I will call upon many teachers who have served this community tirelessly for more than 25 years. They are the storytellers who have in many cases grown with this school, adapting to the various challenges over our 40 years of history. We wish to acknowledge their contributions with this plaque, which will be hung in Father Moen Hall. And I will now call upon the following teaching and support staff to come on stage and together receive this plaque. Mr. Peter Miller, who began in 1974. <laughs> Mrs. Zaley Burke, who joined us in 1975. <laughs> Mrs. Mary Alimo, who joined us in 1977. Mr. John Slana, who joined us in 1981. <laughs> Ms. Josie DeMeo, who joined us in 1981 as well. <laughs> Mr. Grant Evers, who joined us in 1983. Mrs. Kathy Ciccicelli, who joined us in 1983 as well. <laughs> mm 
Mrs. Sedalia Di Costanzo, who joined us in 1984. Mrs. Catherine O'Connor, who also joined us in 1984. <laughs> Mrs. Rosie Salvaggi, also joined us in 1984. Mrs. Eva Lipinski also joined us in 1986. <laughs> Mrs. Angela Carley, who joined us in 1987. And last but not least, Mr. Mario Petrangelo, who joined our community in 1988. <laughs> and Mrs. Rose Bardini, who helps us all. And also, Mr. Nick Meffe, the first custodian of Father Henry Carr. One big round of applause for all of the amazing staff on stage. Patiently for this photo opportunity. We will soon be watching a video of His Eminence Cardinal Thomas Collins blessing the stone structure in our field of dreams. So please just sit momentarily, wait patiently. Thank you. time, I will invite our principal, Mr. Ugo Rossi, to say a few words about the naming of our field of dreams. I just don't want to start when they're taking a picture. Just give me a couple of seconds while they coordinate this wonderful picture. It's okay.
Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the administration here at Father Henry Carr, we'd like to welcome all of you. And in particular, I'd like to introduce our dignitaries, and I want to thank them for their presence here today. I don't have a script. The only script I have right now is to remember the names of all the individuals that are currently here. I'm not very good with names. As you begin to age, you, you tend to lose a little bit of your memory, and unfortunately, names are not something that I'm very strong in. Your Eminence, thank you for your presence in the wonderful homily. Madam Director, Angela Gauthier, I would ask you to please stand and acknowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our champions here in Catholic education. <laughs> Superintendent for Area 1, Ms. Loretta Naughton. Superintendent Lori DeMarco. <laughs> Superintendent Vince Brazada. Now you all know, obviously Mr. Brazada was principal here, but the two former that I did the former superintendents that I just presented earlier were both students at Father Henry Carr. You can ask them the year they graduated. I won't dare do that. Communications Director, John Yan. <laughs> Trustee, Peter Jakovic. And City Councilor, Mr. Cristanti. I'd be remiss not to mention the tremendous work that this wonderful committee did today. As you can see, it was a testament to the tremendous dedication that they have to 40 years of excellence here at Father Henry Carr. Cardinal Collins said to all of us today that we must live with a purpose. I'm a big fan of Will Smith. I think many of you will know who Will Smith is. When he was about 14 or 15 years of age, his father bought a little business. At the front of the business was a wall that was falling apart, and it needed repair. But the father spent excessive amounts of money to purchase this. So he said to his two sons, gentlemen, you have a year and a half to complete the task, and that is to rip that wall down. It's only about four feet tall. Rip it down and put it back together so it looks presentable, so we can begin to earn money for this family. The two boys looked at themselves and said, Dad, how are we going to do this? We have no skills. We're not bricklayers. How are we going to do this? It took them a year, eight months, and 12 days to complete the task. The boys walked through the front door of that building, the father said to them, I want to congratulate you boys. Don't you ever, ever say to me that you can't accomplish something, because you did. They accomplished it. They went two and a half months beyond that point. He also talks about having a plan A. Well, I'm going to compare someone here today. I'm honored to be standing here and sharing the stage who, with someone that I truly believe has been not only the ambassador of Father Henry Carr, who carries Henry Carr on his heart, in his heart, day in and day out. When I became principal here at Father Henry Carr, I thought long and hard on what I was going to do to leave my mark, to ensure that his legacy is ingrained in history here at Father Henry Carr. It's entrenched in the rich 40 years of academic excellence. He's exactly what Will Smith 
and Will Smith's dad had asked for. He had plan A. Plan A, which was to get a field here at Father Henry Carr. It didn't matter who and what he was going to get plan There was no such thing as plan B. And I urge all of you never to have a plan B, because when you have a plan B, that means you're falling back on something. You always strive for something that you need and you want. This is what this gentleman did. I'll be honest with you. 40 years of academic excellence, he spent close to 30 years as not only teacher, department head, and principal at Father Henry Carr. He left an indelible mark. As a tribute to him, it is with great honor and conviction that as principal of Father Henry Carr, the Field of Dreams will now be called the Michael Rossetti Field of Dreams. I ask you to stand. I want to say a few words, though. Ladies and gentlemen, when, and I can see Mario Petrangelo right there shedding some tears because when we went to get this monument, I would ask every individual in this building today to take two minutes out of your time and walk up that pathway to see the beautiful monument that we have put together and it is going to be ingrained for the rest of the history of Father Henry Carr. I want you to take a look at it. I saw the emotions from Mr. Petrangelo and I, I don't want to look at him because it's going to make me cry. Um, we looked at it and we went to this monument and we said, we don't like this one. This doesn't represent Mike. We finally found one that we felt demonstrated strength, conviction, honor, and most importantly, a man who cares about you and everyone in this community. May the Lord bless you and your family, sir. Uh, you can sit down, I won't be long. I, I really don't know uh, what to say at this time. Um, just to say that I'm blessed. Uh, I was blessed in 1985 when I got here. Uh, Nick Nolan and Father Ted McLean interviewed me and said, welcome to Father Henry Carr. So. That's the story, and these are great people, and there are so many great people in this room. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about everyone, but this is a special community, a community rooted in faith and uh, proudly rooted in spirit. And as I've said to you before, we're second to none, and we are a great school full of great people. And so... Father Moen, Father McLean, who are up there looking down proudly at this moment, and Nick Nolan as well. This, this was your vision, and uh, we're here to complete the vision and to carry the journey forward and to continue to make Father Henry Carr a place that we can say home, call home, and be very proud of. And I'm very proud, and as Hugo said, uh, many years here, um, you know, I'm Henry Carr, I can't, uh, I'm at Don Bosco, I'm enjoying it. Father Moen went from Carr to Bosco, so I feel like I'm kind of like Father Moen, although nowhere close to being the man he is. But we're continuing to spread the, the mission and the vision of our school board and our faith. And uh, all I can say is thank you, and uh, I am humbled. I don't know what to say other than thank you. So continue the great work at Carr, because when you say Carr Crusaders, have a great day, everybody. And now, thank you, thank you, Mr. Rossetti. We will now watch the video of His Eminence, Cardinal Thomas Collins, blessing the stone structure that was just discussed. So please direct your attention to the screen to your left or the screen to your right. The Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we ask to be with us as we 
celebrate this blessing of this field, that it may be a sign of God's love in the life of all of those who are gathered here and the years to come at Father Henry Carr School. May the water we use as a blessing, a sign of our baptism, be a true sign of our life in Christ, which this school has uh, for so many years, for these 40 years, so wonderfully exemplified, and which uh, it needs to do so in the present and in the years to come. So may the Lord bless this field in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now uh, I will use the holy water as a sign of God's blessing. Our symbol for the year of hope is an anchor. We have paper cut out in the shape of an anchor, but these are no ordinary pieces of paper. For hidden within the paper are seeds, and hidden within the seed is the hope of creation. As we plant these seeds on the field of dreams, we pray that many people who use this field may be open to allow God to create something new in their lives, and that we may remember Mr. Rossetti's passion and dedication and the, and the effort it took to bring this field of dreams to our community. We also pray that the seeds of hope planted in these individual seeds may one day bear much fruit and strengthen the community. For hope is our souls anchored in God. Amen. Amen. So we'll now process to the gym. Moen, our founding principal who passed away this past December. Before we say a final prayer together, we have one more important ceremonial moment. And so I'd like to ask Councillor Vincent Crisanti to come forward. And he will be presenting Principal Ugo Rossi with some special scrolls to recognize our 40 years. So good morning, everyone. Uh, first, let, let me tell you, I'm really honored to be here this morning and uh, with all of you. Um, Cardinal Collins, is he still here? Still here. Good morning. Past principals, Trustee Jakovic and Mr. Rossi, uh, you know, it's a real honor. And past teachers and present teachers. The, for me, Father Henry Carr means so, so very, very much. I've lived in this community for more than 32 years. Uh, both. I'm, I'm here more as a father than, than anything else. Of two children that attended Father Henry Carr on Panorama Court um, under the principle of uh, Mr. Bailey for, uh, for a while, and um, uh, Steve and Lisa Crisanti. So I think there might be some teachers here, certainly Mr. Bailey remembers them, and um, also as an uncle to three nephews, the Travellini kids, uh, this maybe some of the teachers from the past may remember them as well, right? So uh, Father Henry Carr is such a wonderful school that contributes so much to this community. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, I'm here because I really want to be here to share this wonderful moment with you. But at the same time, I want to present Mr. Rossi with a, um, a scroll that I prepared from the City of Toronto, and this is from Deputy Mayor Norm Cowley and members of Toronto City Council extending their warmest congratulations to Father Henry Carr Catholic Secondary School on the occasion of its 40th anniversary. 
Schools play a vital role in shaping the next generation. They instill essential life skills in our young people to help them become productive citizens and future leaders. For the past 40 years, the dedicated principals, teachers, and staff of Father Henry Carr have enriched the lives of their students by nurturing their creative and academic potential. This milestone anniversary is a great opportunity to celebrate four decades of outstanding leadership and your commitment to quality education. So best wishes for an enjoyable anniversary celebration signed by the Deputy Mayor Norm Kelly and myself. And this is for you. Thank you, Councillor Crisanti. And thank you, everyone, for being part of such a heartfelt mass and ceremony. At this time, we're going to ask those students to come forward who will lead us in our closing prayer. And they are welcome to join me now. Together, when they join us, we will be saying the prayer, the school prayer together, that Father Moen wrote for us all. So if you all could please stand. This is a prayer which was written by <coughs> Father Mohan. And we say this prayer every day during morning exercise, during morning prayer. This is a beautiful prayer. And therefore, I ask you all to join in this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We pray in the spirit of Father Henry Carr. Lord, you are my Father. You have blessed me with the gift of life. Bless me with wisdom to understand that life is choosing and sharing your goodness with my neighbor. Father, teach me to respect and to live the truth. Father, let me know your love for me. Teach me to discover my true self in mind and heart with you, my Lord and my God. Please, Lord, that I may see. Amen. Father Henry Carr. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, so we'll, Father. Yeah, we'll ask the, the dignitaries to go first to the library. Okay. 